Welcome back to Theme Park Wizard, and in this, today's video, I want to discuss Epic Universe and Disney World. Does Disney World need a response to Epic Universe? A lot of people have been talking online about what's Disney's response to Epic Universe, and I'm going to tell you in this, explain in this video why I think Epic Universe or Disney doesn't really need a response to Epic Universe, and how they're kind of different markets. Let's discuss. few reasons why I think Disney um, does not need to respond or is not responding so far to Epic Universe. And the first one is that there's Orlando's actually has a pretty large market share. I took the stats of a 300 mile radius of the population of Orlando and 23.2 million people live within 300 miles of Orlando. I chose 300 miles because that is around about the same mileage from LA to Vegas which is about a four and a half to five hour drive which is a could be easily a day's drive or or you just a weekend type of ordeal so I feel like 300 miles is not too bad for a weekend trip weekend trip from some of these nearby states to Orlando and 23 million people already that's kind of like a home base already live there in a five hour drive of Orlando which is incredible that's enough people to go between all of Orlando's theme parks and even when Epic Universe opens. Those figures, by the way, are from 2021. That's the most recent figures I can find. But since then, the population in Florida itself and those Southeast states have grown and continues to grow as Florida is one of the fastest growing states as people continue to move in there as noted by the recent rises in housing, in, uh, housing prices and population increases so that 23 million number will only grow even higher especially as orlando gets more of a local base um to grow to pull from in 2021 orlando had a tourist um tourist population or about 50 54 million tourists visited orlando in 2021 now that was a pandemic year right coming out of the pandemic mostly and People, there's still restriction, restrictions on international traveling. It's now 2023. That number probably went up at least a few million and will continue to grow as we come out of the pandemic even more. And travel restrictions, particularly from Japan and the Asian countries, continue to be a little bit less harsh and more relaxed. That will allow people to come from Europe and those Asian countries to Orlando, to the major theme parks in Universal and Disney. And they'll just have again more of a market share to pull from so evenly split between Orlando or Disney World and Universal in 2021 Magic Kingdom ranked highest in attendance in the Orlando market with 12 million people with Island, Islands of Adventure coming in next at 9 million people again lower numbers because of a pandemic year but Magic Kingdom was still the top dog now that's not to say some of those people switched from Disney to Universal. That's probably for sure, but not enough to impact enough where the Universal took over as the number one spot in the market. Disney also has a reservation system, which they are limiting capacity. Universal does not, so that could, those could be affecting the numbers as well. I think even with Epic Universe, Magic Kingdom will still be the top spot. Again, many people may spend instead of all week at Universal or at Disney they may take some of their seven days and go to Universal parks instead but I still think Magic Kingdom will be the top dog in the entertainment and the theme park industry at least the theme park market in Orlando and hence the reason why I don't think Disney feels a need that they need to respond Disney and Universal attract different types of people I mean mostly they do attract some of the same people but a lot of Universal's rides are geared towards them, teens and up, teens and adults and adults, right? That maybe 18 to 50 graphic. Whereas the Magic Kingdom is geared towards uh, kind of families, younger children, but then really old seniors as well, with their slower type of rides, um, kind of a wider range of people. Universal is definitely trying to fix and amend that problem by adding more family rides. In fact half at least half of the opening day rides at epic universe will be family oriented so that could draw some of those 
families over there, but I still don't think it's enough where Disney is worried that most of their family um, grip on the market will be taken away. But we shall see. Universal, again, is putting a lot of family rides in there, even family coasters and intense coasters, and they have thrilling rides, and again, family rides for everybody, but still not a lot of still those slow-moving dark rides that everybody can get on. The Epic Universe won't start off with a bunch of those. They have Yoshi and Mario Kart, but um, not too many as to start. But they do have family rides, but again, that uh, Disney has the grip on that, and I think they know that, which is why they don't seem to be too worried about Epic Universe. Which leads right into the next point that Disney is a mature market, I, I call it, a mature market versus Universal, which is a growing, hungry market, right? Disney World has six parks, if you include the two water parks and four theme parks. Universal Orlando has three theme parks, with the water park and two theme two theme parks, soon to be four theme parks. There are not hunger, 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 growing mode. Disney's kind of, again, a mature market. They, they've been there for a while. The parks are built out. Their response, if they do one, should not be a fifth park. It should be something to add to the existing half-day parks. Universal is pretty good with their two parks. They're not really half-day parks. I feel like you can spend a full day in both of their parks and even a full day in the Epic Universe because theirs has a lot of, lot of stuff to do there at opening. But Disney should definitely focus on their four theme parks if they were to respond, so to say. I know a lot of people want a fifth park. That would not be the way to go. But I think Universal is just they're really in that hungry mode. Let's keep growing as fast as possible. Right? Take some of this market. Try to capture some of this market share. Um, even, yeah, but obviously take some people away from Disney. But even maybe capture some new residents to Orlando capture some market share who does not go to Disney already or theme parks already no try to and even the tourist market right captions people from Europe the Northeast here in California yeah the Asian countries um Universal doesn't have quite six parks so they're not in a mature market so to speak but our Level, level, leveling up quickly to get to one. Lastly, if you've been paying attention to any of Disney's recent earnings calls, Disney Plus has been quite a loser uh, for them so far. Has not been profitable and will be profitable, like expected to hopefully be profitable in 2024. That is leading to cash flow problems throughout the entire Disney company as they siphon other siphon cash flow from other departments to try to stymie this Disney Plus problem. Plus, they have the debt they're still paying back from the Fox deal. So even if they wanted to respond big, they may not just have the money to do so, or they may have the money to do so, but find it smart to not use it on that, but to really time with their cash flow problem and try to figure that out, um, which could be a big reason that you don't see many big projects in general, and also delays in prog projects like Tron and the Epcot stuff. They want to sp spread those out over multiple quarters so they're spending less per quarter so it looks better on the earnings calls and as well as they save money in the long run my personal opinion is that i think yes epic universal might take some days away from people's disney world vacations but it won't take many of you know people's disney world vacations entirely that they'll like they won't make the decision to not go to disney at all so they'll still go to both but maybe just spend fewer days at Disney World and more at Universal. Now, this is all if um, Disney makes, you know, doesn't make any crazy operational changes, like with becoming stricter on reservations and things like that. But assuming they continue to pull back on that, I think they'll kind of split the trip down the middle and definitely add some Universal days to the vacation, but not fully stay away from Disney. So, do you agree with me on my points? Do you think I'm correct? Do you have your own opinions? Let me know in the comments below. Do you think Disney needs a response to Epic Universe? Do you think Disney will suffer by not having an immediate response to Epic Universe? Do you think you're pulling a, a wait and see approach? Let me know in the comments below. As always, have a fantastic day.